What's up guys? So today we're going to be talking about Mimikatz. Not necessarily how to use it and how to exploit the network and move around laterally with it, we're going to be talking about how to defend against it because let's be honest, there's nothing worse than getting your penetration test report and the red team was able to use Mimikatz to get credentials and then move around the network. It's not cool, blue teams hate it, it's embarrassing, so let's avoid that. We're going to be using Active Directory to solve our problems today. Yes, EDRs, um, next-gen antiviruses, yes, they all exist, but if an attacker manages to bypass those and your foundation isn't correct, you've got a problem. So let's get the foundation correct and then all the other nice stuff on top provides visibility, you know when they're doing it. Um, but yeah, let's get the foundations right. So I have a little lab over here, we've got a domain controller, which we are going to use to push the policies to our workstation over here. Workstation, we're gonna quickly run Mimikatz, we're gonna show that it works, and then we're gonna apply some policies, and then we are going to show that the Mimikatz stack doesn't work. So, let's dive straight in. So here's our workstation. I've got this awesome little script over here that just goes and downloads PowerShell, a PowerShell version of Mimikatz from this URL over here, runs it and then dumps the credentials. So let's quickly run that. An attacker will run this to hopefully get clear text credentials, that's first prize, or they will get NTLM hashes so that they can go and crack them offline. Which is cool for an attacker because he's not alerting you really. I mean, he's not locking out accounts or anything like that. So yeah, let's go, cool. So we've ran it, we can see that's the um, command it ran. Let's have a look, there's the NTLM hash. There is a password over there. This is bad, this ain't good. This is definitely not good. So what do we do? Let's go to our domain controller and let's start working. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is disable the debug privilege. So we're gonna to go to group policy management. We're gonna set our, um, get our default domain policy. Look, if you have a more elaborate Active Directory uh, setup, just feel free to apply it to wherever you need to apply it. But this should just pretty much be able to, um, go across the board. So you're gonna basically open up your uh, Windows settings. You're gonna, um, my bad, I am sorry. You can <laughs> run up Windows settings over here. You're gonna open up, let me just do this so it's easier for you. You're gonna look at security settings. You're gonna go to local policies. You're gonna go to user rights assignments, debug programs, and you're gonna turn this off. If you need, if you need to add a user or a group to this, um, such as developers or whatever the case may be, you can do it over here. But for this example, we're just not gonna give anybody rights to it. Then the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do, uh, let me just expand this a bit more over there, is we are going to add some registry keys to help us out. So it's a new registry item. Should have that. We're going to create a registry key. We're gonna to go to local machine. Um, by the way, all of this, I'll put it in the description of the video so that you can read it as well. Um, so don't worry if it, this is a bit fast or whatever the case may be, but yeah, or you can just watch this slower or whatever, the case, whatever, whatever. You do you, you guys do you. So you're gonna go to system, current control set, you're gonna go to control, you look for security providers, um, and then boom, w digest, we're good over there. We're gonna add use, log on, credential, down to zero, okay, I'm gonna apply that. Awesome, then we're gonna add another registry key. This registry key is gonna make sure that our LSAS process runs as a protected process, basically. So, same story, local machine, you're gonna to go to system, you're gonna to go to control set, you're gonna to go to control, you look for the LSA um, key over here, you're gonna use that, that's all good. Um, you're gonna add it, it is going to be run as PPL, and set it to one, apply. Okay, there we go. Now we're pretty much almost, we're actually almost done. Okay, cool. So what you're gonna do is next, we're gonna disable credential caching. So credential caching, it's a bit of a, it's, you, what you could, let me show it to you first, let me get there. Okay, let me, let me first get there before I go on. So you're gonna go to confu computer configuration. Over here, you're going to go, you're gonna go to uh, Windows settings. You are gonna to go to security settings. Let's just open that up a bit to make it easier to see. You're gonna to go to uh, local policies. You're gonna to go to security options. Um, you are gonna scroll down until you see interactive logon. And then you're gonna look for a number of previous logons to cache. You need to find the settings. See, Windows wants you to do 10. This basically helps you log in if there's no domain controller available. So if this is a server or something like that, yeah, 
just turn this off because it's most probably going to see your domain control all the, all the time. With um, you, normal user machines, um, you kind of gonna you're gonna have to play with this and find that middle ground between security and usability. Um, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're just gonna set it to zero. Okay, and hit OK. There you go. Now that's just gonna basically not gonna cache any logins. Sorry for you. Ain't happening. Okay. Then there's another one that I want to show you guys. So um, just this is just basic housekeeping on Active Directory. But what you're gonna to want to have, what you're gonna to want to have a look at doing is disabling the group policy editor for all of your for all of your normal users. Look, this should be a um, default. <laughs> you, your users shouldn't be able to um, mess with um, their G, their group policy editor. But I've seen it. Users have access to this. So um, what you're going to want to do is open that up, go to group policy, and then use group policy object editor, disable it, and say OK. The reason you want to do this is just if an attacker gets a hold of a machine and they can edit the group policies, a lot of this that we're doing is useless. So there we go. You've set that. And then lastly, I want to talk, before we update this machine, um, I want to talk about user groups. So um, Microsoft in their, well, what I don't want to say awesomeness because, but anyway. <laughs> so there is in your groups, you have a protected users groups. The protected users groups basically allows you to put users in there and then it forces them to use Kerberos authentication. And that just kind of stops NTLM hash leakage. So that's another thing that you guys can have a look at implementing in your network. So now let's quickly go back to our um, workstation. Let's do a GP update. Um, once this um, group policy update has um, finished um, updating, I am going to log out quickly. And then I will see you in a jiffy once I have logged back in. So we're back. Um, back, logged in. And now we're going to run the same PowerShell script that we did before. We're going to hit that. And if everything has gone according to plan, we should not have any output. There we go. Awesome. Let's take this one step further. I'm going to go into the user folder. Um, Pamela documents, Mimi cats, or oops, I've got everything in there. Let's run that there. Let's just do some wdi jest. Nope, and ain't working. Let's go lsa dump cash night at and working um do secure let's say dash dash log on passwords and working so i hope this video was informative for you guys because i mean there's tons of videos and stuff on how to use uh mimi cats and stuff like that so i just hope that this can give you guys the tools and the knowledge to go ahead and block this type of stuff in your network. My name is Russell Wells from Cyberlinks and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Have a rad day.